So there's guys out there who just cannot seem to gain any muscle. They may have tried some bulking phases. They may have tried many different things and they just cannot put on muscle. And they just say, oh, it's my bad genetics, bro. And they give up and they don't really get anywhere. Whereas there's other guys out there who want, decide they want to put on muscle. They work hard at it and they seem to put on slabs of muscle with ease. I'm going to talk about what I think is the difference here. And I'm going to touch on some of the most common muscle building mistakes that I see when guys come to me for advice. Without further ado, let's dive into it. I remember clearly when I first started lifting, it came from a place of deep, deep, deep insecurity, right? Like I was very, very skinny. I was skinny fat. I was underweight. So I was skinny fat and I was on the skinnier side for being skinny fat. And I didn't like anything about my physique. I didn't like anything about my face either. And I was on like the dating apps or whatever. And I'd be checking them every two minutes. Like, oh, did I get a match? Did I get a match? Like, there's nothing there, bro. I didn't get anything, right? So I was getting no attention on the dating market, whether it's on the apps or even like, you know, in college, high school, elementary school, whatever. Um, like my dating life sucked for, for all three, right? So my dating life in real life was, was terrible as well, right? And that was that deep insecurity is what led me to explore this fitness avenue. Because, um, you know, at that point, I thought, oh, if I get abs, yeah, you know, suddenly my dating life is going to just skyrocket. You know, that was my thinking back then. So when I started, I started with a push-pull legs program. And then I would do that for maybe a little bit, maybe a few weeks. And then I'd be like, oh, I see Kino Body's program. Maybe that's better because I didn't see any results in a few weeks. And then I'd switch to Kino Body's program. And I'd be like, oh, I should try Brandon Carter's program because maybe that's better. And then a few weeks, I'd switch to that. Because I wanted results fast, and when they weren't coming fast, I thought, oh, maybe there's something wrong with my workout. Maybe there's something wrong, um, you know, with my diet plan. This leads me to the first point, first mistake that I'm trying to point out. We need to follow the KISS principle. For those of you who are not familiar, the KISS principle is K-I-S-S. Keep it simple, stupid. Look, building muscle is ultimately really simple. It just takes a long time, and it is hard work. All you need to do to build muscle, if you're trying to build that aesthetic physique, have a program that has heavy compound lifts and accessory movements. So heavy compounds like your bench press and such and compound, uh, or excuse me, your accessory movements like your bicep curls, tricep pushdowns. Make sure you're eating enough and make sure you're sleeping enough. You do these three things, you're well on your way to building a lot of muscle, right? So again, keep it simple. This constant program hopping and changing your plan from one week to the next and this this is doing a lot more harm than good. All right, now the next thing, when I finally decided, you know, I want to put on muscle and, um, you know, bulk up, I decided, oh, I'm going to be, eat everything inside. I went on a seafood diet, right? I was just eating everything, everything I could, Nutella out of the jar, big bags of chips, everything, because I was like, hey, this is my time to finally let go, right? And now I, I'm putting on weight anyway, might as well start eating all this junk food, right? And part of the problem here is that this mentality is actually perpetuated online, like bodybuilding forums and such. Oh, you got to eat big to get big, bro. Oh, it's, it's off season, bro. Might as well, yeah, you know, take your foot off the gas a little. Enjoy life, bro. Like, no, take that thought out of the window. Look, I'm not saying don't enjoy life or don't take breaks, you know, like, of course, go out with your friends or whatever, uh, have a little cheat meal, whatever it may be. But bulking is not an excuse to just eat as much as possible and eat as much um, junk food as possible, right? If you're going to go that route, well, enjoy the long ass cut that's going to come after. You're going to be like, at least in my case, I put on like 40, 50 pounds in four months. And that was very, very counterproductive to my muscle building process, right? Because I had to cut off all that fat. And after I cut off all that fat, I'd barely put on any muscle, right? So it's very counterproductive for you to do that. You're going to waste a lot of time cutting off all that fat. And in that process of cutting off all that fat, you would have barely built any muscle. So that's the second mistake that I see. Now, the next mistake that I see is, you know, it's, it's also perpetuated online by these, oh, you got to do lean gains, bro. Get big lean gains. You don't need to put on any fat. You can just put on muscle, muscle, muscle. And I can take that thought throw it out the window as well, right? We don't listen to those people either. Both these people, they put these ridiculous standards, of muscle building on us as if they're even possible. Like for 99.9% .9 of people, these mentalities do a lot more harm than good. One is on the other side of, oh, just put on as much weight as possible. And the other uh, mentalities on the other side is, oh, don't put on any weight. Like, you know, there's a middle ground here. 
And that's ultimately where we want to get to, right? So look, building muscle is the hard part. Losing fat is relatively easy, right? So don't be afraid to put on a little bit of weight, right? When I was like first getting into this lifting thing, again, I was doing it from a place of deep, deep, deep insecurity, right? And I just thought, oh, if I have abs, then, you know, girls will like me. My dating life will improve. Oh, I got to be lean, brah. I got to be aesthetic, brah. You know, this was the mentality that I was coming in with. So I was like, after my first dirty bulk, after that, I'd always just try to be as lean as possible. As lean as, oh, I got to stay lean. I got to stay lean, right? And that did a lot more harm than good. Truthfully, I think I could have put on double the amount of muscle than I have up until this point if I wasn't so hyper obsessed with being lean. And not just that, I think I could have done it in a much more enjoyable way because staying lean is not easy. It requires a lot of like constant calorie tracking and feeling hungry throughout the day and all these things. A, I would have been not feeling hungry and having all these issues. And B, I would have put on double the muscle, right? Like, and, and I would have looked better right now. Like it's a pretty easy trade-off in my opinion there, right? And just to kind of add on another point to this mistake, sometimes people say they want to put on muscle, but they have no idea about their diet, their lifts, or their sleep, right? Like, look, I know calorie counting and all that is controversial, so I don't want to get into that whole controversy, but just my take on the matter, we're trying to get from point A to point B as soon as possible. And if you have no idea how many calories you're eating. You have no idea about your lift so you can progressively overload. You have no idea about like how well you're sleeping or not sleeping. You're just shooting yourself in the foot, right? If you want to get from point A to point B the quickest, these things need to be optimized. So you should know, okay, I'm on a calorie surplus of roughly 200 to 300 calories. You should know I lifted this much last week. Okay, this week I'm going to try to beat that. I'm going to add a rep or I'm going to add a little bit of weight. You should know, okay, how well am I sleeping? How can I improve that? Do that and you're well on your way to building muscle. All right, now the last thing I want to point out here. Look, be kind to yourself throughout this process. Fitness was truly... If there's one thing that I could point to in like the past five years, like I've been on the self-improvement thing for around five years, I want to say maybe more, maybe less. Um, but if there's one thing that I could point to that truly, 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 absolutely changed my life, like it wasn't, you know, the career progress I've made. It wasn't some, uh, you know, other progress like, uh, you know, any, or any sort of other progress that I've made. It was fitness. Fitness was the catalyst that genuinely completely changed my life right like i remember you know i told you at the start of this video of how insecure i was and i remember going on a date like a few weeks ago right maybe it's been a month maybe two three months regardless like fairly recently right and like i said before i was extremely extremely insecure and this time before i left for the date i was looking at myself in the mirror and i snapped a quick pic of myself and i was like damn i'm looking good you know like shoulders are popping you know uh, face is looking good, everything's looking good, like, I genuinely liked how I looked, and that was an incredible feeling coming from the place, um, in the mental place where I come from before, right, and also fitness was the first goal, like, achieving an aesthetic physique was the first goal I'd ever achieved in my life, and that gave me the confidence, which directly carried over to my career, and it, now in my career, I make good money, and I credit that almost 100% to fitness. Had I not achieved that fitness goal, that trickle-down effect would not have happened such that my career improved as well. So you're on this journey, which I think will completely change your life for the positive by an absurdly large margin, right? Like you can't even imagine how beautiful the future is. So stick with it. You know, this is, be proud of yourself every single day for taking this very hard step that you took that a lot of people won't. So be proud of yourself. And all right, let's keep improving every day. Now, I want you to imagine for a second. Imagine you take this advice, you stick with it, and you feel your self-esteem going up by the day. I want you to imagine that if you had similar vain goals to mine, because I think, personally, I think there's nothing wrong with vain goals, right? So if you had something similar uh, vain goals to mine where you wanted to get more attention on the social media apps or dating apps, you know, you're grabbing your phone and all your dating apps and stuff are blowing up because now you look aesthetic, you know, you're looking good. I want you to imagine that, again, I'd never gotten attention before. So getting more attention was part of my goals. Again, I'm not going to 
try to lie about anything here. So imagine that, you know, now you're wearing shirts, your shoulders are popping, arms are popping out of your shirt. And, uh, you know, people are complimenting you when you go out like, damn, you're looking fit, you know, and you look at yourself in the mirror. You're like, damn, I'm, lo I'm looking good, you know. Imagine that. And that's the path you're on. Hey, keep working hard. I know you can do it. But what I believe doesn't matter. What you believe matters. So I hope you believe in yourself too. That's all I got for this video. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Ultimately, I want this to be our positive little community where we help each other, support each other, and help each other get to the next level in life. So please come join the community. I'll leave my Instagram, TikTok somewhere here. Please do support there as well. Please do like, comment, subscribe. I'll talk to you later. Peace.